Well, hey folks, good morning. Just getting the table ready because we're going to feast at the table of the Lord today. It's always good to remember that we welcome Christ into our lives every moment. And so, you know, like all good households, you got to set the table, right? Get ready for it. I'm six feet away from everybody, so I'm going to take this off. Because that's part of how we get ready these days, is to make sure that we stay safe and take care of each other. I want to remind you that every Saturday from 2 to 5, your congregation is gathering food for the emergency food pantry. Because let's face it, some of us bear a burden that is insurmountable with COVID, and we want to make sure that no household goes hungry. I also hope that you've noticed that the insight is back up and running and that every Friday you're getting announcements from your congregation on the things that are happening to the best of our ability and because we're all just trying to figure this out one day at a time. In many communities, there is a candle for Christ. And as we light it, we remember that Christ is the light of the world and we are privileged to bring it to the world. Won't we, let us start this uh, time of worship together by being guided with some beautiful music. Of praise, psalms of encouragement, psalms of healing, 
the 66th Psalm reminds us that we are to honor God and to tell what God has done. Scripture says, tell what God has done for me. I would offer that tell what God has done for us would be a wonderful way of hearing it. From the Psalm 66, beginning with the eighth verse. All you nations, bless our God. Let the sound of his praise be heard. God preserved us among the living. He didn't let our feet slip a bit. But you, God, have tested us. You've refined us like silver, trapped us in a net, laid burdens on our back. Let other people run right over our heads. We've been through fire and water. But you brought us out to freedom. So I'll enter your house with entirely burnt offerings. I'll keep the promises I made to you, the ones my lips uttered, the ones my mouth spoke when I was in deep trouble. I will offer the best burnt offerings to you, along with the smoke of the sacrificed lambs. I will offer both bulls and goats. Come close and listen all you who honor God. I will tell you what God has done for me. My mouth cried out to him with praise on my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, my Lord would not have listened. But God defiantly listened. He heard the sound of my prayer. Bless God. He didn't reject my prayer didn't withhold his faithful love for me. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing to God be the glory. I think you may know this one.
idea of coming close and listening and telling each other what God has done for us is so fundamental to our faith. And it's been an interesting adventure as we've journeyed through these last weeks to experience that on a personal level. It's just been an absolute blast for me personally. Um, as you all have included me in your journey. And ages ago, I used to make my own little scrapbooks out of things that I found interesting. Um, I call it my project book because it has dreams and schemes of where I think I ought to be going or where I think God is going. Um, but I, I think some of you may actually know this one this one was sent out on Facebook by Billy Graham. She forwarded it, and it talked about how these were the great lessons of faith, so undiluted, of Christian faith, undiluted. And she was touched by that and sent it on. So I was touched by that and clipped it out. This is, this is a fun little book of all kinds of things that I think about. And every once in a while, I sit down and <laughs> page through it and see what I used to listen to and what touched me at that moment. Scrapbooks are kind of a common denominator in our lives. Until I started doing this kind of scrapbooking, I had exactly one. And this one scrapbook consisted of memories of my senior year in high school where I got to play the part of Annie Oakley in Annie Get Your Gun. And once every 10 years or so, I pull it out and look back through, and I remember a pretty interesting time in my life. And if you needed proof, there it is. Me in the Annie Get Your Gun costume. I was Miss Annie Oakley, and it was just kind of a fun moment. Do you, do you have books like this? Maybe they have pictures of your family. Maybe they have pictures of trips that you've taken. They help you remember what it was that was special and important to you. God has done great things for us. A friend of mine called and was talking about where this journey of physical separation was going for him. And he was talking about how it has really challenged him to dig deeper into scripture and wider into scripture. Now when his pastor would send out his weekly prayer, he would look up the scripture and read the stuff that happened in front of it and read the stuff that happened after the scripture quote. I love that imagery. Um, I was reading in a particular kind of Bible called the Spiritual Formation Bible, and it talked about how you can pray the scriptures. And I was reading about that. Uh, Deb Schnitke has shared that she's been digging into the letter to Timothy a lot. Just She said, I had this Bible study, and I know it's meant for a group, but I just decided to do it during this time of separation and intentional focus. Jean Schrader came to me and said, I got this great Bible where if you read it in a particular way, you read the whole thing in a year. I'm catching up. And I love the fact that it uses great big headings so that I can kind of tell what's going on in the scripture. Jill Haas reported to me that as she has been cleaning her sister's home, preparing it for a season to be a place that houses a new family, a, a new particular group of folk, she found a list of scripture, and it was called the medicine chest. And it starts out like this. For the blues, read Psalm 27. For an empty purse, read Psalm 37. It goes on to talk about if you're discouraged, read this scripture. If you're losing confidence in people, read this scripture. If you cannot have your own way, read James 3. If you are out of sorts, read this scripture. And if you have a traveling companion, read this scripture. The 
scriptural medicine chest. I just love that. And by the way, it's all of these scriptures are included in the email text that I sent through the church office that also included the link for this worship service. So if you want to go back and review them, you can have that encouragement. The book of worship has a list of 71 prayers that are in the hymnal. Have you ever thought of the hymnal as being a medicine chest for your soul? While in times of joy it helps you remember how God has done great things for you, and when you're struggling, there are prayers of encouragement for you. 71 prayers are in our hymnal. I jokingly said with another congregation, hey, we may not have any hymnals anymore, but I bet you if you all brought the hymnals from your homes, we'd have enough and then some. I'm glad to say all the hymnals that we have are ready to be returned to full duty in the future days. But the hymnal is a resource, and I hope you might look at that. There was one other thing that I remembered as I was recalling the ways that God has done great things for us all. It was also a Bible. And when I first got my hands on it, I was really thrilled. I felt that God had gifted me because it was a particular translation and it was also the perfect size to slip into my briefcase and carry with ease. You see, there are these new felt kind of Bibles out, but they stick on the way in and out. A leather Bible slips in and out and makes it very easy and you can deal with it quite nicely. I was thrilled and it did happen to be my mother's Bible, the last one she used in her studies. As I used that Bible, I realized from the notes that were in it that it was the same Bible that my sister and she, my mother, would study together on the phone every Monday. They did it for a year. My sister would call and they would have Bible study together. Every time I opened that Bible, that perfect sized, easy to use Bible, I had this twinge, you know, this really shouldn't be with me. It should be with my sister, so that as she remembered mom, she could have that Bible in her hands. That Christmas, I did. I finally took me about a year, but that Christmas I packaged that Bible up and wrapped it up in Christmas paper, and I mailed it to my sister with a note that said, I hope you realize from the notes in the Bible that this one belonged to mom, and it was the one she used when the two of you studied scripture together. What a blessing. God has done great things for us, and we are blessed to remember. It's going to challenge us in the next weeks, in the next months, in the next years, on remembering that God does great things with us, and that the first thing out of our mouths should be the celebration of these things, and then to embrace them into the lament of the hard work of being faithful in these days. What has God done for us? I want to know what your answer is. And I pray that it is an honest celebration of the great things in your life. Now thank we all our God, a hymn chosen because it reminds us that although we typically sing this at Thanksgiving time, every day is a day of giving thanks where we acknowledge what God is doing and has done for us. Gifts of love and 
sheltering at home, I, I find and must confess that I have been. The principal's name was Principal Tushman from the amazing little movie called Wonder. At the end, he's handing out the awards for the graduating class, the Henry Ward Beecher Award for Good Works. He goes on to say, after reading a quote, it made me realize that good works come in many forms. Hear these words from Mr. Beecher. Greatness, he wrote, lies not in being strong, but in the right use of strength. For he or she is greatest, whose strength carries up the most hearts by the attraction of his own. In the life of Jesus Christ, we have been attracted to knowing that heaven intersects with earth, and it is our privilege to demonstrate that intersection of life and love and hope. Go forth, and may the light that you carry be the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. 